Chapter Five: Helmholtz Energy and Gibbs Energy, Section Five Point Five. H and G depend on T and P. The internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, and Gibbs energy of a system all depend on pressure, volume, temperature, and entropy. But out of this P, V, T, and S, only two can be chosen as the independent variables for a fixed amount of pure substance. It's often convenient to treat H and G as functions of T and P. Let's look at H first. dH can be expressed as delta H over delta T times dT plus delta H over delta P times dP.、Uh, the reason we do this is because delta H over delta T under constant pressure condition is Cp. Delta H under constant pressure condition is simply Q sub P. We have proven that. And over here, delta H over delta P under constant temperature condition can be written as V minus T delta V over delta T.、Uh, we can prove this using one of the Maxwell relations. Now, for a valueless gas, pressure is this N R T over V minus M B. And then minus a n squared over v squared, so we have this equation. Now we're going to use this equation to derive delta v over delta t and plug it in. Given this equation, we can simply take the first derivatives of both sides relative to volume. So we're going to take this n r delta t over delta v over here, and then on this side. We're gonna take the first derivative with respect to volume. So we'll do、uh, this part first.、Uh, P does not depend on volume because we have、uh, a constant pressure condition.、Uh, we'll just take this derivative to a negative two a n squared over v cubed, and then multiply by v minus m b. Go here. And、then we copy this here, and then we take the first derivative of、uh, v minus m b, which is just one. Again, this is just、uh, the product rule.、Um, the differential of f g is the differential of f times g plus the differential of g times f.、Uh, we can just、uh, clean this up. Uh, this uh, p is、uh, n r t over v minus n b minus a n squared v squared. So this two, the sum of this two, is simply n r t over v minus n b.、Uh, this one,、uh, we just、uh, put this on top. That's how we got here.、Uh, delta h over delta p under constant temperature condition is simply v minus t、uh, times this delta v over delta t. All right, delta v over delta t is the reciprocal of this、uh, delta t over delta v. So that's why we need to kind of do some algebra, and then write delta h over delta p in this form. Really complicated. You have something on the bottom over here as the result of subtraction. That's why we cannot separate this easily. So again, if you have something like one over、uh, a minus b. There's no easy way to separate a from b or from b from a, but we're gonna use some mathematical trick. We're gonna、uh, allow a approach zero and compute this delta h over delta p. We are gonna allow b approach zero, and then evaluate delta h over delta p, and then we sum up the two results. So when a approaches zero, that's easier because this a is zero. This part disappears, and you simply get t over negative t over v minus m b. So really, it's just、uh, v minus m b. Then you have v minus、uh, parentheses v, v minus m b, and that's just m b. So really simple. If a approaches zero, delta h over delta p is simply a m b. And M B has a field of convenience; it's just the space taken up by the gas particles, or you can say just the、um, the size of one particle multiplied by the number of particles. All right, so that's the field of convenience of this. Now let's say B is zero, and then we delete this M B term. We delete this M B term. 
Uh, however, if you look at the denominator, it's still a, a, a subtraction over here. How do we simplify this? Well, we'll just uh, write this in this form. All right. And I don't know if you have uh, heard this or remember this. Uh, 1 over 1 minus delta is approximately 1 plus delta. Uh, actually, uh, it's um, just from the uh, truncated uh, version uh, of the Taylor expansion. Um, and we have this, and then we have this, all right? So 1 minus delta is... Uh, if you have 1 over 1 minus delta, you get 1 plus delta. Alright, and then we evaluate this, we got this term that contains only A. So if there's no B, delta H over delta P is negative. There is no A, delta H over delta P is positive. Now when both A and B play a role, we have this expression. Alright, this expression. We have MB, we have negative 2AN over RT, we put them together. N is the common factor, so it's just B minus 2A over RT. Uh, this derivation of delta H over delta P uh, was detailed in the section on the Joule Thomson experiment. So in that section, we needed to derive delta H over delta P, so we can see more detailed derivation there. Uh, over here, this is just a quick derivation, uh, especially going from here to here. Uh, I want you to just double check this numerically. So for example, 1 over <coughs> uh, 0 0.99 is 1.01. 1, .01. 1 over 0 0.99 is uh, 1.001 with a very small numerical error. Now let's look at this. You can see delta H over delta P for a venous gas. Depends on both uh, A and B. Uh, if B is predominant, uh, and then this delta H over delta P is positive. Is A is predominant, and then delta H over delta P is negative. All right, so really it's just uh, mathematics. If B is greater than 2A over RT or smaller than 2A over RT, we have a different sign for delta H over delta P. Again, for a venable gas, we have this equation. It's just MB minus 2AN over RT. And then we can compute delta H this way. Uh, again, we're assuming H depends on pressure and temperature, so we integrate CBDT. Over here, we just integrate this delta H over delta PDP. Assuming CP is a constant within a moderate temperature range, uh, this integral is just CP times delta T. Uh, over here, I'm gonna assume all this uh, are constants. Uh, that's a really reasonable uh, approximation and it's going to be just uh, this MB minus 2 a over RT times delta P. For ideal gas, of course, A is 0, B is 0. Uh, there's no attraction, no repulsion. Uh, and then delta H over delta P is just 0. So this part becomes 0 for ideal gas. And then delta H is just the C integral of CPDT. That's really easy. Now for a liquid or solid, uh, do not do this. Again, this is just for venous gas with venous parameters. So do not do this. Uh, do this instead. Uh, we derive this equation using one of the Maxwell relations. And delta V over delta T on a constant pressure condition, this one is simply V times alpha. Uh, that's the definition of alpha. Alpha is uh, this derivative over V, all right? So we get this equation. Yeah, and for a liquid or solid, alpha is usually very, very small. Okay, this alpha is usually very, very small. Like uh, 10 to the power of negative 4 or even smaller than that. And then that means T times alpha. T is uh, 10 to the power of 2, 300-ish. So T times alpha is usually much smaller than 1. So we can say this is approximately 1. Uh, now let's look at one example. If you have copper, you have alpha, you have kappa and we multiply T and alpha, we got 0 0.015, that's much smaller than 1. So over here, this T times alpha at room temperature is much smaller than 1 for copper. Uh, even for a liquid like water, uh, T times alpha is roughly 0 0.06 at 300 Kelvin, so it's still much smaller than 1. Uh, because of that, we can still use this approximation uh, for the convenience of calculation. 
And then for liquid or solid, we can simply integrate CPDT. We can integrate this. This is delta H over delta P times dP. The first integral is CP times delta T. The second integral is V times delta P. Again, we're we'll just to uh, look at this subtraction and notice uh, the uh, term to be subtracted is much smaller than V, so we drop this one. Uh, over here, we were assuming CP is independent of temperature uh, as long as the uh, temperature range is a moderate temperature range, we can use this equation. No problem. And again, UHG and A all depend on PVTS, but out of uh, pressure, volume, temperature, and entropy, only two may be chosen as the independent variables for a fixed amount of pure substance. Of course, if you can change the amount of the substance, then there will be a total of three <coughs> independent variables. Now we have only two. Uh, it's very convenient to view G as a function of temperature and pressure like this. DG is DH minus DTS. DH is TDS plus VDP. DTS is TDS plus SDT. You cancel TDS, TDS, you get data SDT plus VDP. G depends on temperature, G depends on pressure. DG over DT is negative S when pressure is constant. When T is constant, DG over DP is volume. Uh, the Gibbs energy of a pure substance always increases as temperature increases. Uh, the reason is uh, this negative entropy is always negative. So when temperature goes up, uh, G goes down, uh, assuming uh, the pressure is held constant. The Gibbs energy always increases as V increases. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, there's a typo here as P increases. All right, this is a typo. Um, uh, this is just because V is always positive, so if dP is positive, then dG is positive. Uh, if temperature is held constant, all right. So we have this equation. All right, delta G over delta T is always negative uh, when pressure is constant. When we have a isobaric process, uh, we can simply write dG is negative SDT and then delta G is negative integral SDT. All right, but uh, this uh, entropy also depends on temperature, so this integral is not that easy. All right, you have to know how this entropy depends on temperature and then integrate that. Um, now let's look at this equation, uh, delta G over delta P is V if temperature is constant. So when we have a isothermal process, dG is just VDP, uh, we can just integrate this part, it's usually easy, no matter uh, the substance is in the gas phase, liquid phase or solid phase. If it's in the gas phase, uh, this V is approximately an RT over P and you will get an RT times the logarithm of P final over P initial, right? Uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, if you have a uh, real gas, uh, use the Venable's equation or simply uh, just say this is approximately um, an ideal gas for a liquid or solid because the volume of a liquid or solid uh, does not really depend on the pressure change, all right? As long as your pressure change is, uh, is moderate. Uh, the volume of a liquid or a solid remains constant or approximately constant. And it's really easy to integrate a constant. Again, in an isothermal process, dG is just VDP because dT becomes zero when it's isothermal and we have this equation. Uh, if we have a ideal gas, you can see the detailed derivation over here. Volume is an RT over P. And we integrate this, we get an RT times the logarithm of P final over P initial. Uh, for a real gas, uh, most of the time, we can just put an approximate sign here. V is approximately an RT over P, so we still get this. Again, for a liquid or solid, uh, V remains constant, so we just do this. Uh, delta G is V times delta P. 
uh, as long as the pressure change is not too significant. For example, if you change the pressure by 5,000 bars, and then we might have to look at the volume change. We might. Uh, let's look at one example problem, 5.5.1, calculate the change. The Gibbs energy of 1.0 liquid water with this density. When the pressure changes from one bar to two bars, uh, we'll just do this. When the pressure changes from one bar to two bars, uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, volume of water remains uh, roughly constant. And uh, its uh, molar volume can be easily calculated given the molar density, uh, given the density and the molar mass, which is 18 milliliter per mole. And we have one mole such water, so it's 18 milliliters multiplied by a pressure change. Milliliter is 10 to the power of negative 6 cubic meter. Bar is 10 to the power of 5 pascals. So the result is only 1.82. Or you can say 0 0.0018 kilojoule. Now let's look at another numerical example problem. 5.5.2. Same water. One more water. And um, uh, but this time it's water vapor. Okay, it's water vapor. Now we're going to change the pressure from one bar to two bars for this uh, gas phase. Now let's look at this. Uh, this time we're going to use ideal gas law. Volume is uh, nRT over P. We integrate nRT times the natural logarithm of PF over PI. So we have LN2 here. LN2 is roughly 0.7. Temperature is 400, R is 8.3, and we have one here. So it's 8.3 times 400 times 0.7. Roughly it's uh, 2300 Joule. Uh, now if you compare this, 1.8 versus uh, 2300 Joule, you realize that the Gibbs energy of the gas depends on the pressure significantly. The Gibbs energy of a liquid <coughs> or a solid does not quite depend on the pressure change. The dependence is minimal. Uh, they differ by roughly uh, <coughs> in the order of 10 to the power of 3. Uh, this is because if you look at this equation and this equation, you'll notice this V is uh, much larger than this V. The V of the vapor is much larger than the V of the liquid. How much larger? Well, uh, roughly in the order of 10 to the power of 3. That's why this is uh, larger than this by an order of 10 to the power of 3.